It's very hard to find good speakers on consciousness. There's a lot of people out there making fluffy statements which they trademark and charge hundreds and thousands of dollars and etc. In the more recent times, more people are having very potent near-death experiences, past life experiences. Information is being brought forward with more validatable techniques. More information is coming forward which can be used in a practical level. Peter Smith, we had speak at our last Nexus conference. I was so impressed by what he's doing and his ongoing research, his enthusiasm and his passion. I've got him back here for this next conference. For those who weren't here last year, this is his bio. Some 12 years ago, Peter came to realise that the corporate world would never make a meaningful contribution to the evolution of consciousness on our planet. Having worked inside the system for many years, he left, determined to make a difference in other ways. Already a qualified hypnotherapist, Peter created the modality of hypnoenergetics as a metaphysical form of hypnotherapy that embraced energy, consciousness and the practical use of spirituality for therapeutic benefit. He trained a network of practitioners across Australasia to bring this modality to the world. He has been a leader in the field of life between lives, hypnotherapy, working with Dr Michael Newton for the past decade and since 2009 and has been the president of the Michael Newton Institute, an organisation based in the USA with members in 40 countries. Some amazing research is coming out of the Newton Institute. I can't begin to encourage you, I can't begin to say how important it is to go out there and read some of this information. The information coming through in my mind is some of the most exciting and liberating stuff out there. It takes you up in that helicopter I was talking about and you get a view of your life and your reality in such a way that it actually becomes practically useful in your life. I don't want to, don't want to preempt the rest of his talk though. My, um, Peter's more recent work has been to blend basic principles of quantum physics with expanded states of awareness to create the quantum consciousness experience. Since 2012, the Institute for Quantum Consciousness and its accredited facilitators have taken hundreds of clients on journeys into alternate realities, parallel lives and interdimensional consciousness in an attempt to find out more about the greater universe and our place in it. Peter returns to Nexus this year to share new stories of the afterlife, the latest research findings from the Institute of Quantum Consciousness and some of the fascinating cases his team have discovered recently. Please give him a big warm Nexus conference return. Round of applause, Peter Smith. Thank you. I have great hope for humanity because I believe three words sums up who we truly are. We are powerful beyond measure and we simply need to remember that as a way to recapture our magnificence. For the last four years we've been taking people on journeys where they've been discovering their magnificence. For the last decade I've been working with people to awaken the immortal understanding of their spiritual identities in the Life Between Lives work. We are far more than we believe ourselves to be. And if we all awaken to that, humanity will be very, very different. And we can create a different world from the one that we're currently in. This is what I want to tell you today. I want to share with you some examples of real people who've made these real discoveries. I want to share with you their stories, their powerful stories, because they are within the grasp of all of us. We've been activating this consciousness by means of a, a couple of different ways, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you um, some words that we use in the bringing forward of the remembering of people to be in their immortal state, to be in that state where they can access the multidimensional aspects of their being. Uh, whether you see yourself as a spiritual being having a human experience, whether you see yourself as a multidimensional being, whether you see yourself as a portal to a greater consciousness, all of that are just aspects of who you are. And as you start to allow those parts of you to emerge, something beautiful can happen. I'd like to share with you some words that we use in the bringing forward of that. So what might be helpful as we help you to remember a little bit about who you truly are, you might like to close your eyes and just absorb these words and allow them to touch you. 
deeply. And now allow yourself to remember. In this moment, you simply know that you are a part of the greater universe, intimately connected to all there is. With every breath, this remembering becomes stronger as you expand and recall this feeling of floating outside time and space. With every beat of your heart, you open more and more to all that you are, have been and will be, all connected now as time and space is left behind. You are simply energy, an expanding state of awareness, part of all there is. You feel deep comfort and peace from the energy that surrounds us now. And every breath now becomes a sacred experience, drawing universal energy further into your being, connecting even more strongly to all that we ourselves have created. Rest now in the remembering of all this. Let go and just be. We call that the remembering. We call that as an, as an if you like, an unearthing, a remembering of who you truly are in your greatest potential. One of the things that uh, I'm impressed with is quantum physics. Other science, I think Duncan described science as a religion. Um, and that's true because a religion has certain parameters, has certain beliefs, has certain ways of offering to you um, well, how you should view the world. Remember the scientists of their day once told us that the earth was flat. They once told us also that the, the earth was the centre of the universe. Science updates all the time. What I love about quantum physics is it's the, uh, the science of possibilities and that they don't agree. And I think that's really healthy. So science is not enough to really understand consciousness. We've got to use part of our imagination. I'm going to send you a... Uh, a message that the human intellect is something that really holds us back. So if we were to try and understand really, really simply, how is the universe made up? What's our place in it? I mean, we could talk for hours on that or we can make it really, really simple. Everybody agrees that energy is the infrastructure of all there is. Everything is energy. You can ask a quantum physicist, you can ask a Reiki master. You can ask anyone that works in the energetic areas, or the energetic fields, no pun intended. Ask anyone who works in that area and they'll tell you that everything is energy. So this we know. So where does consciousness fit? Consciousness is what brings this all there is to life. And it is multidimensional. We are the strands in an incredible tapestry of all there is. And at the moment, in this moment, you are simply one strand. And that one strand is your awareness that's in this room. But you are so much more. You are all of these other things as well. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, consciousness is what you are. One of the interesting things that I see in my work is when people talk to me about um, how science can prove consciousness, I think this is a flawed approach because I believe our intellect is part of the human form and that is our most limiting aspect. So when uh, quantum physicists talk about the theory of everything um, and they think that with this, you know, this tiny speck that we are in the universe that we can actually understand how everything works I know for a fact from the research that we've been doing for a long period of time now that when we take people beyond their physical form, when we take them out into all there is, they understand it. But then we get them back into their human body, into their human intellect, and we ask them to explain what's it like out there. They say, I remember the feeling. And they can't clearly articulate through human language or through human form exactly what that is. So... The theory of everything is flawed because um, ultimately we're never going to be able to understand it with the human intellect, but we can explore and we can feel and we can move into that. So let's talk a little bit about, I want to share with you an old friend. I'm sure you've seen this before. So let's talk about 
There's our summary. Everything is energy, the underlying form of all there is. Consciousness brings all there is to life. And our awareness, that white strand, is where we direct our consciousness in any given moment. Let's start with that as a premise. 